What is going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Cup of Kodo 1. Today we're knocking out our next video in the Panda series. Uh, again, Pandas is just the way that we can utilize um, different data files so we can begin to do data analysis and get files, manipulate them, get ready, pull out different parameters and so forth so we can perform different kind of mathematical operations and then eventually even apply machine learning and um, uh, AI to these particular files. So, let's start off. Um, I do... Many times I'm either going to use the debugger or I'm just going to run the file and we're going to go line by line as we go through it. Um, the debugger is huge when it comes to like for loops, um, while loops. And again, that's that's mostly because of the iteration. Anytime we're iterating, it's good to do the debugging so you can see how the values are changing within memory. It just makes it, um, it, makes it more understandable when you have a, a visual representation of it. But when we're just doing straight up uh, data manipulation, it's easy enough just to look at the printout of what we're getting in the console to see what it is that that particular code did to the uh, to the file that we're manipulating. So with that said, let's get right into it. Um, so first off, what we have, uh, we know how to load a file, but how about creating our own series? And um, Panda series is a one-dimensional container, or a, it's also a, anything one-dimensional one is also the vector. Um, so first off, we're going to import pandas as PD. Um, and then I have s equals pd dot series capital S series because we're, we're calling the the, the series um, data style essentially from pandas, and we're saying uh, banana comma forty two. So let's see what that's going to do. And then I'm just printing s and then a new line. So all we did is just create a new series with um, a one dimensional container. That container is a list with only uh, two different elements in it. One is a string banana and the other is 42. But you can see how those are horizontal, both within the brackets containing a list. And when I look at my output, it created a one dimensional series index of zero and one banana and 42 respectively. Uh, and it will keep that order. Then we have the row number is the index for the series. And that's what we have. The row number is the index for this series. We can apply a name to these values. So let's manually assign the index values to the series by passing a list through this. So what we have here is I'm just saying S is now we're changing S. So S used to be PD series, but now to 42. Now S equals PD dot series. And now we're creating our new uh, one dimensional container. Big Daddy is a string, comma, Master of Universe is a string, and we're closing that. So we're having two different, uh, we're going to have two rows. We already know off the bat. And then we're telling it for the index, don't put zero and one. We're saying index equals person and then who. And then we're asking it to print it out. So, of course, we have person who, we have Big Daddy, Master of the Universe. You can see that it will right align these, um, these, these uh, inputs that we put in. Now this, if I didn't put this in, it would have gave me the same 0, 1, just like we did with banana 42, but we're telling it what we want the index to be. And of course it goes one for one. So person is the first element within this list. So it's going to be associated with Big Daddy because that is the first element in our container. And then who is the second. So it's going to be tied to the who and so forth. So now we're doing um, S equals PD series. Now we're creating, if you see that open squarely bracket, immediately you should think dictionary. And a dictionary has key and values. So now we're saying the key is person and the value is Big Daddy. And then the key is who and the value is Master of Universe, closing off that dictionary, printing it out. And now we're going to get essentially the same exact output. Person, who, Big Daddy, Master of Universe, both of them are object data types. So two different ways you can do it. One is just creating a list and then telling what the index is going to be. The other is doing a dictionary where you're doing key value, which is very similar to just having your element with an index uh, of, of, your, of your choosing. Um, so now we're going to create a data frame, which is a dictionary of a series objects, capital S series, meaning that that's one of the data types for pandas that we're utilizing. Um, the key becomes the column name and the value is the contents of the, or the, the features of that particular uh, um, column. So I just have science equals PD dot data frame. And then I'm opening my dictionary here and I'm saying my key is name and name has two one and two different values. You have Albert Einstein, comma, Nikola Tesla. And then in the next dictionary entry for the key, I have job and it has two values, math and everything. Now remember, order matters in the sense that the first element of every single value is going to be associated with the other first element of a different key value combination. So math is going to be attributed to Albert Einstein. Everything's going to be attributed to Nikola Tesla. Born, we have uh, the key is born, key is died, key is age, and they have their respective values. And again, the first value is going to be tied to the first value down the list. The second value is going to be tied to the second input in the list and so forth, in the dictionary rather. 
and then we're closing off the dictionary, and then we're just printing out science, which is our series. So you can see that we have do 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 do. So I have this is the science series. I just want to break it up so we can visually, it's easier for you to see where we are. And then we have index zero, index one, and it's, now we have age, born, died, job, and name. Now, each time I run this, it can change the order, particularly with dictionaries, but the, 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 the sequence. But right now it's gonna do it, it's gonna default to alphabetical. So that's why age is first, then born, then died, then job, then name. It's doing it alphabetical. But it's keeping the sequence of those particular pieces. So even though we started with name, Albert Einstein, Nikola Tesla, name, they have Albert Einstein as the first value, Nikola Tesla as the second. And each of these, math, died, born, and age, are all going to match for Albert Einstein, even though the, the, the columns are put alphabetically. And same thing for Nikola Tesla. So that's all this does. That's why it looks that way, just because it, the default is to put it alphabetically. Um, again, noting the capital S in series and DF in data frame. Those are the two additional, um, those are the two data types that we get with pandas. It's capital S series and capital D F for data frames. Uh, notice that the order of the columns is never how you wrote it, um, and which I just covered because it's defaulting those columns to alphabetical. Uh, we can specify the column order by deciding which column um, we, we want to use as the index. So we're going to use the dictionary key and use, is that what I said? And use it as an index parameter. Yep. Good. So I'm consistent. So here I have science one. I'm just creating a different variable. So I'm not messing with my first variable equals PD dot data frame. And then we have, uh, again, the dictionary. Now you'll see, this is the same for name, job, born and died. But above here we had age. I pulled age out. And now I'm saying index equals 76, 86. And my 76 has to go first in this list because that, that index of 76 is going to be tied to all the first values that are within my dictionary, Albert Einstein, Math, March, and April, so that everything is consistent. And then the same thing with the 86. So now what should happen is the index over here, the index is 0 and 1. Our index should change to be 76, 86. And then our columns should be in the order that we specify, which is name, job, born, died. We're getting away from the um, alphabetizing of it. And then we're printing out science one. And that is what we have right here, printing out of science one. So you can see appropriately, the index is no longer zero one. The index is now the age, which was 7686. The data is consistent across the columns and the columns names are no longer alphabetical. They are put in the exact order and they're consistent with the data that we put in when we specified what we wanted the columns to be. Um, I just wanted to know uh, for when I when people do this and they have certain syntax errors, it's things like they're including the index and the columns within the dictionary, and that's not appropriate. The dictionary is just the keys and the values, uh, not how many you have, but just the keys and the values. Index and columns get pulled out, uh, similar to what we did up here where you had our list of our two elements, and then we were saying the index was gonna be those two elements. Um, but it's not it's not part of the list, it was, it was taken out, just like it's not part of the dictionary, it's gotta be taken out. Um, so say we wanna grab a row out of our data frame, so if we wanted to take out a particular row and just look at it again, the rows are going horizontally, um, So the, and the row would be the all of the values for one particular element, not a column, rows go that, are going that way. So uh, here I have row I want equals science one. So I know I'm calling this variable dot loc L O C 86. So dot loc uh, can take not only integers, it can also take uh, names. If I used I loc, I location, integer location, I'd have to use an integer. So I'm saying for dot location 86. Now you're going to say, what the hell is this 86? Well, remember, I indexed by ages in science one. So for row I want, this variable, when it goes here, when it's looking for this, it's going to science one and it's looking for what the hell in here tells me that there's an index of 86 and it's right there. So now it knows, ah, you want me to give you all the data that is the second element inside this dictionary. So the first element and then second element. So it want, it's saying for 86, since it's the second row, 
it's the second element, it's going to tie to the second element here. So it should be giving me Nicola, everything July, January. And then, of course, I'm also asking for the type because I want to prove that point, and then the row I want. So down here, it's giving me exactly what we just asked for. We're saying for index of 86, give me that whole row. And that's what it did, and it did it as a series. That's why it's printed out in this fashion, because it is a series data type, a, a, panda, a panda object series data type. Going down, we have... Um, now I just have print the row I want dot index, so we're doing index method, and that is right here. The row I want is exactly that. It gave me the name, job, born, and died. That's just giving me the index saying what columns did I pull from that. Dot values is pretty much going to be tied to the same thing. What are the values for those, those indexes, those keys? And it's Nikola Tesla, everything July and then January. Um, age is not there because again, remember age was used as an index. If I wanted age to be included in there, then I could have called the science variable instead of science one because the science variable included age within the dictionary. But in science one, we pulled age out to be the index. And for that matter, the, the pulling of the out, pulling the age out for index could have been anything. It could have been name, could have been born, died, job. We could have used anything to pull out as long as it corresponded where the first element was tied to the first value of the dictionary and the second element was tied to the second value of the dictionary. Uh, it, it still would have worked uh, the same. Um, print science dot index. So that is going to give me one, two, three. So, whoops, Daisy. Here is the index, and then when we print the values for it, we have the values, and of course, it went and sorted everything alphabetically again, but again, for our index down here, you'll see that, but the range, this start, zero, stop, two, step of one, and that's simply showing us this for the index for science, because that was our first one, the science series, not the science one. Uh, 58 say we need to know the series keys. So I hit science.keys. And again, remember, keys are tied to the dictionary. Dictionary has keys, semicolon, then value. So science, and the science was the first variable that we created. So the keys that it's giving me, it's telling me age, born, died, job, name, and the data type is an object. And again, notice that it did it alphabetically. And if I go to science, that is correct. Name, job, born, died, and age. Those are all the keys that are in my dictionary up above. Um, row I want dot keys. So what is row I want again? Oh, that's right. That's science dot one, but only for row 86. So what are the keys associated with this? And it's telling me here, name, job, born, and died. Name, job, born, and died. That's appropriate. Uh, now we go to science one dot keys, and that is here, name, job, born, died, data type is object. Why is that the same? We'll look at science one. Our dictionary had name, job, born, and died. Age was not included because, again, we used age as an index pullout. Um, on the attributes, we use the brackets. On the methods, we use the quotes. Uh, but we can still use uh, method after. So that's just printing here. I'm saying row I want dot index, and I'm doing brackets one. So row I want is, again, only this 86 parameter, this one here, this is row I want, this pulling it out here, and we did it, it printed it out as a series. Um, index of one, so an index of one is what? It's pulling out job, because again, we're doing the index portion, and if you look at the series that we printed out, I wanna show you that that's exactly what it is. Uh, row I want index, so I'm going to right above this, I'm just gonna put, um, whoops, just so you can see it really quick. So row index. So this is the row I want dot index. Okay. And now here where I'm saying row I want dot index, and I'm calling an index of one. Remember, we're index zero with Python. So when I come here, I go zero, one. So I'm saying give me the second key, which was job. And then over here, row I want dot keys open parentheses, one, it's also giving me job. Now, do I have row I want keys? I did that one here. So let me, just for the sake, let's do so we can easily see it. Uh, row keys, I sure did, amateur mistake. Take it out, so we have row keys, so let's print it, look for row keys. 
So under row keys, so when I printed row I want dot keys, it gave me exactly that for the row I want, which was tied to this. The keys were named job born and died. So let's see, name job born and died, that's appropriate. And again, we're saying give me, out of all the keys, give me the first index, and we start at zero, one. So it's also gonna pull out job. So just showing that you can utilize either dot index and pull out the index that was based on the series, or using a data frame and pulling out the keys and then specifying the, the key location that you want using an index uh, method essentially by zero, indexing of zero and onward. All right, that's it for today. Use the code, play with it, break it, learn from it, change the parameters, see what you get. Again, this is just for didactics, building um, muscle memory patterns so when we get to more appropriate applications, these things will make sense to you. And then at least when you're reading somebody else's code, you can go backwards and see what it is they're pulling and why. And it just makes a hell of a lot more sense. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.